Hi there, this is Maarten Baljau from JetBrains. In this screencast, let's introduce .peak. .peak is a free tool that is able to decompile any .NET assembly into the equivalent c -sharp or intermediate language source codes. It's available as a standalone tool and inside other tools such as ReSharper, .trace and .memory. .peak inherits a lot of functions from ReSharper, so you will feel at home working with .peak. It comes with ReSharper-like navigation and search, code insight, and familiar keyboard shortcuts. Let's look at .peak in action. On the left-hand side, we can see the Assembly Explorer. It lists the assemblies that are currently loaded in .peak. We can open individual assemblies from disk, or open a full folder or a zip file containing assemblies. Assemblies can also be loaded from the global assembly cache, NuGet, or from a running .NET process. Let's open Entity Framework from NuGet. We can search for the package name and then open it from here. We can expand notes and see the references for that assembly, as well as embedded resources. A double click will show the contents. The Assembly Explorer list also shows namespaces in the assembly, and expanding those, the types in there. If we double click a type, .peak will show the source code of that type. We can see properties, we can see methods, we can see method bodies and so on. Basically anything we would expect to see here. .peak will attempt to download the symbols and source code from a symbol server. If no symbols are found or we cancel the download, .peak will show us the decompiled source of that type instead. If this behavior is not desired, we can toggle it in the options. But let's keep the defaults here. .peak has excellent navigation features. Let's see if we can find the class db context. We can use go to type or control t to do this. We can search using the full type name, like so, or use camel humps to search. By looking at the camel case type name, .peak lets us do partial searches such as dc or dbc and also match db contexts. We can use the keyboard arrows to scroll down or up the list of results and hit enter to navigate to the type. When inside the source code, there are more navigation options available. Using Navigate to, hidden behind the Alt Backtick shortcuts, we can see what else we can do. Navigate to or the Navigate menu are a great way of discovering what options are available within .peak. There are several navigation options in here. We can navigate to declaration, implementation, derived symbols, symbol usages and more. Using Navigate to, we can also navigate between decompiled sources or sources from the symbol server. Let's navigate to the base type of our DB contexts. Since we are implementing two interfaces here, .peak will show us both of them and we can select from them using the mouse or keyboard. Now back to our DB contexts. I'm interested in seeing if there are any derived types. We can find out using navigate to again, or use the alt end shortcuts to navigate to derived types immediately. There are quite a few types to select from. Let's navigate to the EDM metadata contexts. Typically, Entity Framework does some initialization work when our database model is first loaded. This happens in the onModelCreating methods. We can navigate to it immediately using the GoToMember navigation, or use Alt Backslash. Looking at the source code, this method calls into another method named ConfigureEDMMetadata. Let's navigate there using go to declaration or F12. We can also navigate using control click. Let's go to this model configuration.entity. Another useful navigation is go to string or control alt T. We can search for any string that is used inside our assembly. Let's see where entity framework alters table definitions by searching for the string alter table. Those are quite a few locations. Again, we can navigate through the list and jump to the source where our string is used. We can navigate to recent files using control comma. Let's go back to our db context like that. Want to know where the object context property is being used? We can find usages using shift F12. In the tool window that opens, we can see usages and navigate to them using the keyboard arrows and the enter key. For larger types, it may be easier to get a good overview of the members in that type. 
Using the File Structure tool window, we can view all members and their accessibility from a separate tool window. Back in DB contexts, we want to see the class hierarchy for it. The class inherits from objects and we can see which classes inherit from our DB contexts. We can also generate a diagram for our classes. From the Inspect menu, we can show the Type Dependencies diagram. We can hover over our DB context and add all inheritors. For a given inheritor, we can do the same and craft a diagram that basically shows us whatever we want to see. The diagram can then be exported as well. We can do a similar thing at the assembly level and see, for example, how our assembly references other assemblies. This one can also be sliced and diced. We can zoom in and out or export it. So browsing code is nice, but sometimes it's also nice to navigate to the raw intermediate language. .peak lets us do that. Again, using navigate2, we can jump into the IL code. Not sure what the IL means? By default, .peak synchronizes the IL view with the code view. When we locate the caret on a specific symbol, the IL view will jump there as well. This is what the database property looks like in IL. The statement our caret is located on will be highlighted in both views. This way we can more easily find which IL makes up which statement in source code. We can also see comments in the IL view, containing line and column numbers. Another nice thing is that hovering the IL instruction will show us what it does. This one here, for example, shows us that the instruction creates a new object instance of the type. Also from the IL view, we can navigate elsewhere. A .NET assembly consists of two big chunks of data. Of course, there is the intermediate language, which we've already explored. The other part is the metadata portion of the assembly file, which contains a series of table and heap data structures. From the assembly explorer, we can navigate through the metadata of an assembly and look at these data structures. For example, we can see string literals in the strings and unicode strings table. We can expand usages here as well. We can browse portable executable file headers, such as the DOS and NT headers, we can see fields, methods, types, and so on. There are some other great features in .peak. One of my favorites is the built-in symbol server. Under the options, we can configure .peak to act as a symbol server and serve decompiled sources to tools like Visual Studio and WinDebug. Let's say we want all sources from our assembly explorer available in this symbol server and copy the symbol server URL to the clipboards. From the toolbar, we can start and stop the symbol server. I loaded a crash dump from a production web server in Visual Studio. If we debug it, all we get to see is machine code instructions, which is not really helpful in diagnosing the issue at hand. Even worse, we don't have the symbols or source code for this application at hand. Luckily, we have the application assemblies and .peak. Let's drag the entire folder containing the production assemblies into .peak so that we can serve up the decompiled sources. If we now configure symbol locations and enter .peak's symbol server URL, we can load symbols for our crash dump. .peak decompiles the original assemblies in the background and serves them to Visual Studio, where all of a sudden we can see decompiled sources. Awesome, right? Any assembly that's open in .peak can be exported as a project. Using the context menu, we can export the current assembly as a project and even generate a solution file. For larger projects, this may take a couple of minutes. Once completed, we can see the project on disk and open it in Visual Studio. Alternatively, we can also save individual types. Just right-click the Types Editor tab and hit Save As. Just like Visual Studio, .peak offers a few color themes to choose from. In the options, we can change the appearance of .peak and choose, for example, the blue theme. 
By default, .peak will use the same team configured in Visual Studio. So if in Visual Studio we are using the light team, .peak will use the light team as well. One last thing I want to show are assembly lists. From the file menu, using Save Assembly List, we can save the list of assemblies we have open in .peak to disk. We can then clear out our workspace or load another assembly list that we previously saved. This makes it really easy to switch between different workspaces. We've seen how .peak helps us explore source code for assemblies. .peak can load source code from a symbol server or decompile any .NET assembly into the equivalent c -sharp or intermediate language source codes. We can navigate and learn about the codebase. Check out our website and download .peak to give it a try.